Please be seated if you would. We welcome you to Jesus the Lord Outreach Center. Praise the Lord for what He is doing in your life and in the body of Christ as the Word of God is going forth. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to receive our offering as we bring up our tithes and offerings and worship Him. Father, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to bring up tithes and offerings unto you. We give freely, we give excitedly, we give because we want to. We know that you're multiplying the seed sown. Father, we thank you that you are causing all grace to abound towards us, that we have all sufficiency in all things and may be able to abound to every good work. Father, we thank you and praise you for meeting the need of every individual according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Ushers, wait on, wait on the people if you would. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I encourage you to get the good news for you and take it out and pass it out to people. Be preaching the gospel. Tell you people need to hear the word. Tell them the truth. Don't hold anything back. They need to hear the truth so they can come to the place of getting born again. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for all men and pray for our nation as we do in every service. Father, in Jesus' name, we continue to pray for every person who has never received Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. We bind all the devils that are in them in the name of Jesus. We loose those blinders off their minds. We thank you for bringing them to the place of repentance. We pray you, the Lord of the harvest, we you know that you are sending forth your laborers as we pray. We thank you that they are preaching the gospel of the kingdom with the word sown in their heart. Thank you for the entrance of the word that brings light, bringing understanding to the simple. Thank you for bringing them to the place of repentance, of believing on Jesus. Father, thank you for bringing them to the place of receiving Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for reaching all those people that have never heard the name of Jesus, those people that have only heard religion, those people that have been backslidden, that have turned away from you. Father, thank you for reaching the multitudes and thank you for the mighty move of the Spirit of God that is coming forth throughout the world as the gospel of the kingdom is being preached in all the world for a witness. Thank you for the great harvest of souls that are coming in in these last days. Now, Father, we do pray for this nation. We continue to stand in the gap remitting the sins of this nation from its founding to this moment. We thank you because we are your people who are called by your name, who humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways. We know that you're here from heaven. You said you'd forgive us our sins and you'd heal our land. And we thank you that we have authority and dominion over the works of the enemy because our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against those principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness, the evil spirits operating over this nation. We bind you. We loose your hold. We cast you down, throw you down. We fall upon you to your destruction. Father, thank you for sending the warring angels to battle and to do warfare and to prevail against all of these evil spirits over this nation. We destroy your works. Father, we thank you for bringing this nation to the place of repentance and bringing the fear of God upon it. All those that are not born again or walking with you, thank you for bringing the fear of God upon them. Thank you for revealing yourself to them. Thank you for shaking this nation. Thank you for bringing our leaders to repentance. Thank you for opening their eyes Thank you, Father, for bringing those the ones that are godly rulers, righteous rulers, to arise up and speak forth boldly. Father, we just bind the devils that are operating through all these ones in the media, those ones in the government, those ones that are operating through the business sector, through those ones in, in positions of authority, local, state, and national, in the, in the courts. Father, we just thank you that you are mightier than all of these vessels of the enemy. Thank you, Father for bringing forth the righteous into positions of authority. We know that when the righteous are ruling, the people rejoice. Thank you for bringing the people to the place of crying out for righteous government and demanding that the things of the Word of God, the Constitution, the way its things have been set in this nation be enforced in line with the laws. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing to reach this nation, to bring it to repentance. Thank you for sending a mighty move of the Spirit of God to turn it back to righteousness. Thank you for your restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's 
Stand with me if you would. We're going to pray as we get into God's Word this evening. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for your Word. It is the truth. We do receive your Word this night, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We'll take hold of it, be a doer of it. We'll see the fruit of it come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We finished talking about the subject of grace, and we're going to talk about mercy tonight. God wants us to understand the mercy of God is available for us. The grace of God is God's favor towards us in His attitude because we've met His conditions. The mercy of God is the love of God in action where He is doing something for us. It is action. Healing is mercy. Deliverance is mercy. Doing acts of mercy. This is a love of God in action. And that's what God wants to bring forth in every one of our lives. We see here in Psalms 103, verse 8, that the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. He's plenteous in mercy. Yeah, he doesn't lack for mercy. He's not holding anything back either. He wants to extend His mercy, the love of God in action to minister to you and to meet all the needs in your life. Plenteous in mercy, He says. We also see, as it says in Psalms 45, 145, in verse 8, it says, the Lord's gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. Great mercy that he has. It's not just a little bit. People think mercy drops falling, maybe they'll hit me, you know. Stupid songs out there that people have sung in the past. No. Mercy is available. He has great mercy, plenteous in mercy, to meet every need in our life. We see over in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us. Because of His great love for us, His mercy he did something about it. What did He do? Even when we were dead in sins, He quickened us together with Christ. For by grace you're saved, as He says, and He's made, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is His mercy, the action, what God accomplished in order to bring us to this place. We also see over in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 3, it speaks of the Father as the Father of mercies. It says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He's the Father of mercies, and He will bring forth His mercy in our life. We know Jesus is also one who is merciful. We see in Hebrews chapter 2, it speaks of Him down in verse 17. And it says here that, Wherefore in all things behooveth Him to be made like unto His brethren, and he, he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. He is a merciful and faithful high priest. His mercy is ready to be released, and he's faithful, ready to perform his word in our life. We need to understand mercy. We even see a statement over in Matthew 23, verse 23. Matthew 23, 23. This is where Jesus is speaking to these scribes and Pharisees, calling them hypocrites. He says, you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, things that were really important, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. It means these were pretty important things to God. Mercy is one of the weightier matters of the law. He wants us to understand this. He wants us to operate in it. Now, if we're going to see the mercy of God that's available for us, we do have to meet the conditions. It's not going to happen just because we want to see God's mercy. We must meet the conditions to see mercy come forth. In Genesis chapter 39, here we see it speaking about Joseph. Genesis 39, verse 21, it says, The Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the, king, of the keeper of the prison. He showed him mercy. Why? Because he refused to sin. He refused to lie with Potiphar's wife. He refused to. He wasn't going to do what was wrong in God's sight. And God showed him mercy. When we do what's right in God's sight and we won't sin and we'll walk in His ways, then we're not only going to get favor, but we're also going to be shown mercy by the Lord. We see in Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 6, it says, showing mercy unto who? Everybody? No. 
thousands of them that love, <coughs> that love me and keep my commandments. So who's mercy shown to? The ones that love him. Who are the ones that love him? To keep his commandments. If you're walking in the commandments of God, you're walking in his ways, then God's mercy will be shown towards you in your life. We see over in Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, when it talks about the inherited generational iniquity curses that come on generations because of the sins, it says in Numbers 14, 18, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy. He doesn't want these curses to come. It says he forgives iniquity and transgression. He does, he forgives it. But by no means will he clear the guilty, the ones that haven't dealt with their sins, that are guilty. The visiting of the iniquity of the fathers is upon the children of the third and fourth generation. That's because he's just. He is a just God, although he will forgive us. And he's long-suffering and of great mercy. He will forgive you, and his mercy is available to minister to the needs in your life. Over in Deuteronomy, in chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, down in verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, so this is something speaking for the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, that means repentance from sin, repentance and turning to the Lord, and also obedience, doing what he says. Obedience, he says, the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he sware unto them. Well, God wants us to turn to him. He wants us to obey his voice. He wants us to realize that he is a merciful God. He will not forsake you. He will not forget the covenant. He will bring forth his promises in your life. We also see in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. God's faithful, and he will keep his covenant, and the mercy that's available, because the covenant has mercy that'll be released, all the promises that God wants to bring forth. Again, it's for those who love him, and those that keep his commandments. We see over in Exodus chapter 33. In Exodus chapter 33, we see a statement that is, sometimes confuse people, where it says in verse 19, I'll make all my goodness pass before thee, and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I'll show mercy on whom I'll show mercy. That sounds like, well, God sounds like he's only going to show mercy on whoever he feels like showing mercy on. I mean, God just arbitrarily showing mercy on one person and not on another because he decides to do such and such? No, not at all. We go back in verse 12, and we need to see what's being said here. In verse 12, where Moses said to the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. So, here Moses had grace in the sight of the Lord. God saw he was walking right. And he says, Now therefore I pray thee, if I found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Moses was walking, walking right, but he also says, I want you also to consider this nation as your people. Otherwise, I want to show mercy towards this nation as well. He's including them now. He said, my presence shall go with thee. He's talking about Moses, and I'll give thee rest. Who's he talking to? Moses. Does he say anything about the nation? Nope. He said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here, and I and thy people have found grace? Now, Moses keeps bringing in the people. He's found grace, but now he wants to keep bringing these people in because I want you once trying to get them to get the grace and the mercy towards them. They found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. He keeps including the people. The Lord says to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou, you, have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. He keeps on repeating, saying back, yeah, it's for you, but he ignores talking about the people. Why? Because they were rebellious, they were stubborn, they were not walking in God's ways. So he keeps on, he says, I beseech you, show me my glory. And he said, I'll make all my goodness pass before you, and I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before thee or you, and I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I'll show mercy on whom I'll show mercy. 
Otherwise, is it just him arbitrarily saying that? No, he's essentially saying, I'm going to be gracious to whom I'm going to show grace and mercy, to show I'm going to mercy. Those who have met my conditions that I want, that I'm going to show it forth to, which was Moses. Was it for the people? No. Why? Because they didn't meet the conditions. They were not walking in the way of the Lord. Therefore, he didn't see the mercy of God for them. And so, of course, he revealed himself unto them, but he, the mercy of God and the grace of God was not shown to the people because they were rebellious, they were disobedient. So when it says here that I'll show mercy on whom I'll show mercy, it's not just him deciding what he wants to do. He's going to do it because people have met the conditions. We see over in 2 Samuel, so that means you and I are going to have to meet the conditions of walking in his ways if we're going to see the mercy of God come to pass. Don't think that God's just arbitrarily deciding to show it to one and not to another. 2 Samuel 7, 15. My mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Well, he took it away from Saul because Saul was rebellious. Who got repl who replaced him? It was David. His mercy did not depart from him as he was walking in the ways of the Lord. That shows the fact that, again, if we meet God's conditions, we'll see mercy. If we don't, as he took it away from Saul, it can be taken away from us. It's not automatic just because we're born again or we walked right with the Lord at one point in time. No. We've got, he disobeyed and he lost his kingdom and he lost the mercy of God. We see in 2 Samuel 22, verse 26, With the merciful wilt thou show thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. Otherwise, if you're merciful, then you're going to see mercy is going to be shown towards you. With the merciful, those that are merciful, then he'll show yourself that way. That's why you've got to always extend mercy to others. You can't be judgmental, you can't be critical, you can't be negative. Remember, you're always going to give people what they have need of, not what they deserve. You're going to extend what God wants for you to give to them. We see another reason why people, uh, conditions for mercy, and this one shows you why people don't give mercy, it's in Isaiah chapter 27, down here in verse 11. Isaiah 27, 11, he says here, speaking of these people, it says, for it is a people of no understanding. Why wouldn't they have understanding? Because they weren't doing what the Word says. Therefore, he that made them will not have mercy on them, and he that formed them will show them no favor. No favor, no mercy for those that don't have understanding. Again, who gets the understanding? The ones that hear the word and do the word, spiritual understanding is going to be imparted unto you. It all is tied in with you walking in line with the word of God. We see a scripture over in 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 6 tells us something else. Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy. He saw great mercy. Why? According as he walked before thee in truth. Hey, he had a track record. He was walking in truth. You and I need a track record of walking in truth. Not just going to turn today and decide, I want mercy, and then you haven't been walking right. No. He was walking with him in truth, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. Because of his walk, in line with the word and the way of righteousness and uprightness, then that's why he got great mercy. The same will be said for you and me. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23. He said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath, who keepeth covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. It's another point. We can't just be doing the word half-heartedly. We've got to do things with all of our heart. We just don't go through the motions with God. You're either 100% with him or you're not. Remember, the lukewarm, they get spewed out. The ones that are hot are going to be accepted with him. He wants you to do things with all of your heart, not half-heartedly. Heartedly. We see over in Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Pick up in verse 11. Conditions for the mercy of God. As the high, heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy. It's great, but who's it towards? Anybody? No. It's for them that fear him. See, this is why people think they want to, I want us to get God to pray, somebody to pray for me to get healed and you're not walking right. It's not going to happen. This is also why we don't pray for the unbelievers, for all the promises of God to come to pass. Someone recently came and wanted me to pray for someone, and my first question was, is they born again? He said, no. 
I said, well, what we're going to do, we're going to pray for them to get born again, come to the place of being in covenant relationship with God, and then pray oh, that as they, then they're going to take hold of the mercy and receive the healing, the deliverance, the things that they have need of. Well, they wanted me to pray for this person just because they wanted to pray for them. They weren't born again at all. I said, sorry, they don't have a covenant with God. They don't have a right to it. Great is his mercy towards those that fear him. See, all these things show you've got to be in covenant. You've got to walk in the ways of the word. It's not going to happen for people that are outside of the covenant of God. They have to be in covenant relationship. We see down in verse 17. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto his children's children. Again, you walk in the fear of the Lord, it means you're going to hate evil, you're going to do what he says, you're going to depart from iniquity, you're going to, you're going to walk in the ways, of, you're going to put the word of God first place. What's going to happen? You're going to see the mercy of God coming to pass in your life. Praise God. That's what he wants to bring forth. We see in Psalms 86. Psalms 86, verse 5. He said we see this again here about the Lord art good, ready to forgive, plenteous in mercy and unto all them that call upon thee. Here the person comes to call upon the Lord. Plenteous in mercy. He's also always ready to forgive. If we just call on the Lord, we confess our sins, we forgive, we turn to Him, then His mercy is going to be available to us. We also see something over in uh, chapter 85, verse 10. It says, Mercy and truth are met together, and righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Otherwise, as you're walking in truth, see, these go, these go together hand in hand. They meet together because when you walk in truth, you'll see the mercy. You don't walk in truth, no mercy. Same thing, when you're walking in righteousness, you're going to have peace. You don't walk in righteousness, you walk in unrighteousness, you're not going to have peace. They, they go hand in hand. If you have one, you're going to have the other. That's why we've got to walk in truth if we're going to see the mercy of God be manifest in our life. Over in 2 Chronicles, chapter 30. 2 Chronicles 30, down in verse 9. If you turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that led them captive, so that they shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. Some people think, well, I've done such terrible sins and I don't think God can ever forgive me or have mercy on me. No, it's a lie. God will forgive you. He'll remember his sins and iniquities no more. And he says he will not turn his face away from you if you return unto him. He's looking for repentance. He's looking for us to come in line. Remember the woman taking the very act of adultery. He said, you know, don't go and sin anymore. Just go and sin no more. Well, he's not going to bring judgment upon her. Instead, he says, just turn and start walking in the ways of the Lord. God wants us to turn away from every way that is not in line with his ways and walk his way. Then you can see the mercy of God come forth, the love of God in action to bring the promises to pass in your life. We see over in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 7, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he'll have mercy upon him, and to our God, and he will abundantly pardon. Notice he's talking about your way, so that's the way you're walking, and he also talks about your thoughts. Not only is your way important, but God wants you to really govern your thought life. He doesn't want you to let unrighteous thoughts be in you. He wants you to take those thoughts captive, cast them down, things that are evil. Do not give place to those thoughts. And you return unto the Lord, he'll have mercy upon you. Some people think, well, I didn't do a bad thing, but I, yeah, I've been thinking of some negative things. That's going to affect you. You've got to guard yourself. You've got to have your mind stayed on him to be in perfect peace. God wants you to govern your mind, your thought life. Do not let evil thoughts stay in you without you dealing with them and casting them down and replacing them in line with the Word of God. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 11, The Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord. I'll not cause mine anger to fall upon you. There won't be judgment. He says, For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I'll not keep anger forever. God is so merciful. Some people thought, well, I think God might be mad at me. If you confessed your sins, he didn't remember what, you're, what they are anymore. If you truly repented, he's not mad at you. He wants you just to walk right. 
He is a merciful God, praise God. We've got to realize that. So quit letting the devil beat you up over your past. Don't let him. He's a master at bringing up all the things the past, condemning you, and bringing all this negative stuff up. And if you've dealt with it, then do not let him harass you and bring guilt and condemnation upon you. Jeremiah 13, 11. As the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man, so I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me a people and for a name, for a praise, and for a glory. That's what God wanted. But they wouldn't hear. No, they wouldn't listen. Same thing. God has great plans for us. He wants to do great things for us. But if we won't hear and won't hearken to Him, are we going to get anywhere? No. It comes down to verse 30, 14. He says, what's going to happen to these guys? I'm going to dash them one against another, even the fathers and the sons together, saith the Lord. I'll not pity nor spare nor have mercy, but destroy them. Judgment was going to come upon them. Why? They wouldn't hear. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't do what God told them to do. God is looking for us to come to the place of choosing the way of the Lord. We see over in Psalms, back in Psalms, 13, conditions for mercy. Verse 5, I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. If you're going to see mercy, you've got to trust in the Lord to bring it. You've got to believe and have faith. He's promised it. You trust in the Lord. He will bring His mercy to pass in your life. Don't, again, watch the negative thoughts that come at you saying, well, God won't do that for me. He's a liar. You need to trust in Him and know that He will absolutely bring it to pass. We see in Psalms 33, verse 8, it goes right along with this. Let the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants, inhabitants of the Lord here stand in awe of Him. It talks about must not have been the scripture. I must have wrote that down wrong. It's the one about the mercy, hoping in the mercy. Maybe it's near the end. It's verse 18, not 8. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. So again, here we see this fear of the Lord coming into play, walking in his ways, that God's watching over you, and also upon those whose hope in his mercy. Hope is, refers to a confident expectancy. You're expecting the mercy of God to come to pass in your life. We see over in Psalms 147. Psalms 147 in verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in them that fear Him and those that hope in His mercy. Same thing, except now it's talking about how He takes pleasure in you. You walk in the fear of the Lord, you hope in His mercy, you're going to see it come to pass in your life. Also, of course, we've got to deal with sin, as we mentioned. Proverbs 28, verse 13, tells us, He that covers his sin shall not prosper. Now, you can't cover them over. You've got to deal with them. You know, if we don't confess them before the Lord, receive forgiveness, cleansing from all unrighteous, get right with Him, we're not going to prosper whatsoever. But whoso confesses and forsakes them, he turns away from them, he leaves them, he shall have mercy. Always deal with your sins don't ever try to cover things over and hide them. Confess them, forsake them, turn away from them, and God says that He will show forth mercy towards you. Praise God. We see over in Matthew, chapter 5 in the New Testament, verse 7. He says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Again, whatever you're giving out is what's going to come back to you. If you're not going to show mercy to others, how can you expect God to have mercy be shown to you? It won't happen. God delights in mercy. He wants you to be merciful. Do good to people. Do good things. Give them what they have need of, not what they deserve, remember. Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Be therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. That's how you become like Him. You want to do what He wants you to do. We're going to go on to perfection and be like children of our Father, for children of our Father, and we're going to be like Him, doing the same thing that He says. So we're going to do everything that's merciful from God's standpoint. We also see in Colossians 3, verse 12, it says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, show compassion, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering towards others. That's the attitude we have to have. Forbearing, that means holding one up, not tearing them down, 
holding up one another, forgiving one another. If any have a quarrel against thee, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. You cannot allow negative things to be in you on regarding relationships. It will shut off the mercy of God and the blessings of God coming forth in your life. We also see that we're to show mercy to those people that are poor. We want to have wisdom. You don't just give money to the guy that's a drug addict who's going to go out and spend all the money on drugs. That's not exactly too wise. Proverbs 14, verse 21 says, He that despises his neighbor sinneth, but he that has mercy on the poor, happy is he. You're going to be happier. You're going to be blessed, this means. You're going to have wisdom. You're going to you know, get them something they have need of. Don't just put money in their pocket where they can go and blow it. So he says, Do they not err that devise evil? But mercy and truth both shall be to them that devise good. Look for the good things to do. God says, Mercy and truth will be shown forth for you. We also see a scripture over in uh, Psalms 37. Psalms 37, as we're looking at conditions that are so important, because if you, you aren't going to take hold of the promises of God if you haven't met the conditions. Psalms 37, down in verse 21. The wicked borrows and pays not again, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. God's, you're, you're a giver. You're to be a giver. It's one of the graces. God wants you to be a giver to help meet the needs of other people. Praise God. We see in Psalms 109, Psalms 109, verse 16, he says, Because he remembered not to show mercy, but he persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. Now, that's the wrong thing to do. We need to remember to show mercy. This guy did not show mercy. But it says if he didn't, he actually was persecuting the poor and needy man. God wants you to give out and help meet the needs of people. Of course, same time, preach the gospel to them. Don't just give them something. What they really need, they need the gospel. They need Jesus. and They need to get their life in line with the word of God. And so that's why when you do give things to the poor, be sure you give them something that's going to give them the gospel. That's what they really have need of. Many people have a tendency to give out to the poor, and they don't give the gospel. That's a mistake. Interesting statement here in Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. He says, Wherefore, O king, let thy counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. You break off your sins by righteousness because you turn away from it. You're walking in the way of righteousness. You repent, confess that sin and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. You're doing the things that God wants. You're showing mercy, and when you show mercy, then God is going to show mercy back to you. We see over in Hosea, chapter 4. In Hosea 4, verse 1, Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Why? There's no truth, there was no mercy, and there was no knowledge of God in the land. If you don't have the Word and you don't have the knowledge of God, are you going to see any mercy? No, it's not going to happen. God's going to do things performing His Word in our life. That's why we've got to get the Word in us. And when you have the Word in us, you need to sow that Word by speaking it and or acting upon it to see God bring forth mercy. Hosea 10, 10 12 is an interesting scripture. It says, sow to yourselves in righteousness. How do I sow to myself? By doing the Word and by speaking the Word, doing something in order in line with righteousness to take hold of promises, what's going to happen? You're going to reap in mercy. You sow to yourselves in righteousness according to the word. God's mercy will come to pass. Break up your fallow ground. That's talking about the ground that's been untilled. And what's that ground a type of? The heart. Areas in your heart where you need to get things dealt with. You need to get your heart right. Get the word in you. It's time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Always have a heart that's tender before the Lord. Time to seek Him. And as then you sow to yourself in righteousness, you are going to reap in the mercy of the Lord. We see over in Micah, Micah chapter 6, another statement. As we're talking about conditions. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee? That's what He requires of us. But to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with thy God. You're going to love just. Do justly, which is righteousness. You're going to love mercy. And you're going to always walk humbly with your God. That's what we're going to do at all times. Now over in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 18. 
Matthew chapter 18, we pick up over here in verse 26. This is where, we go back here, this is where it's talking about, in verse 23, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king, he take account of his servants. God's certainly going to take account of us. He began to reckon one was brought to him that owed him 10,000 talents. Great debt. You and I have had a great debt because of all of our sins. For as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, his wife, his children, all that he had, payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down at worship and said, Lord, have patience with me and I'll pay thee all. What happened? The Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. He loosed him and forgave him the debt. Yeah, the big debt now has been loosed. That's exactly what's happened with us. Same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants and owed him a hundred pence and laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Well, that was, that was not the right thing to do. His fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me and I'll pay thee all. It's the same thing that he had said about his great debt, didn't he? And he would not, though. And he went and cast him into prison until he should pay the debt. Well, he didn't show mercy on the guy. What's going to happen to him? The fellow servants saw what was done. Uh, they were sorry, very sorry. Came and told them their Lord all that was done. And so his Lord, after he'd called him, he said, Oh, thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that yet because you desired me. I forgave you of this. Shouldn't you have had compassion on that fellow servant even as I had pity on you and shown mercy and compassion on him? His Lord was wroth, delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. And then he tells what he's talking about here. He says, so, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not every brother his trespasses. You cannot be forgiven of all your sins and then not forgive another of their sins. You don't forgive them of their sins, you're not going to be forgiven of your own. And it's got to be a genuine forgiveness from the heart, not going through the motions, a true, genuine forgiveness from the heart. So that's important. And he says, uh, as he said in verse 30, 34, it says, if you don't, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be delivered to the tormentors. Now, that's the spiritual tormentors. That's the demons that are going to come in. Unforgiveness is going to open up the door to allow evil spirits to come into a person. God wants us to make the right choice. Always forgive at all times in our life. We also see over in Romans chapter 12. In Romans 12, Verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is what you're supposed to do. Through the compassions of God, you showing forth action, what God wants, you're going to present your body a living sacrifice that's holy and acceptable unto the Lord. That's our job. You do that, and then God's going to see the fact that you're living unto Him, and you're yielding yourself unto Him, and He's going to bring His blessings upon you in your life. We see over in verse 8, this is where it's talking about the different gifts according to the grace that's given to us. It talks about prophesy, prophesy according to the portion of faith on your ministry. <coughs> Let us wait on the ministry, and he that teaches on teaching, he exhorts ex exhortation. He that gives, let it do with simplicity. He that rules with diligence. He that shows mercy with cheerfulness. You got to do it with the right attitude of heart, with a cheerfulness, readiness of mind. Otherwise, you don't do it because I have to and ought to do it. No, you should be doing it with a cheerfulness, a readiness of mind, carrying out the ministry that the Lord has. Otherwise, you don't do things grudgingly. We see over in James, James chapter 2. In James chapter 2, down in verse 10. Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. That's why, praise God, we're not under the Old Testament law any longer. And they list all these things out. So speak ye, and so do ye, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty, which is the New Testament law. We want to be sure we're speaking and doing the right things. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that has showed no mercy. Mercy rejoices against judgment. Otherwise, if you don't show mercy, you're going to have judgment without mercy. Whatever you show to others is what is going to come back to you. You do to others as you would have them do unto you. We see over in Jude, if you will walk in love, you will see the mercy of God coming forth in your life. 
Look what it says in Jude, verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. It's interesting, this word looking for here is the word prosdecomai. Remember we talked about the words receive, and most of the time we're talking a lot about lombano, taking hold of. This is the other word, decamai, the opposite, which is a accepting of something coming to you. And that's what this is talking about. Keep yourself in the love of God, and you, you can then accept the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ because it'll be coming to you because you met his condition, because you are keeping yourself in the love of God. You walk in the love of God, mercy is going to be shown unto you. We see over in Matthew chapter 25, quite a statement that's made here. Verse 31 and following. The Son of Man, when He comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, He'll sit upon the throne of His glory. And He's going to gather all the nations. He's going to separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. He's going to find out who's on which side. He'll set the, set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. He'll say to the, the king will say to them on the right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. These are the ones that are the righteous ones. He said, For I was a hungry, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. In other words, you reached out to people. Then shall the righteous answer him and say, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, fed thee a thirsty, or gave thee drink? When saw we a stranger, took thee in, naked, or clothed thee? When saw we sick, or in prison, or came unto thee? The king answered and said, Insomuch that you've done it unto one of the least of my, these my brethren, you've done it unto me. That means everything that you're doing to another brother, you're actually doing to the Lord. That's why you better be doing the right things, otherwise you're going to be doing the wrong things to the Lord. But then he says, the guys on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, in everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. It's not supposed to be for man, but unfortunately, people go in there. For I was a hungered and gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I, he goes on and says, I was a stranger, you took me on in. Naked, you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. And then he'll answer him and say, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, a thirst, a stranger, naked, sick or in prison, didn't minister unto thee. He said, Verily I say unto you, insomuch that you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. You didn't even do it to one. You won't even do it to one person if you haven't done it to the Lord. He said, These guys weren't serving the Lord at all. These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. These are the ones that call them Lord. So that's referring to people who are born again, but they didn't do what God told them to do. They ended up going to everlasting punishment punishment. You see, mercy is going to be shown because you show mercy. It's going to be acts of mercy. Mercy is always something that's being shown forth, released. And so God wants us to be showing mercy so we can see mercy. Now what's mercy going to do for you? One thing, you know, God has promised that he will perform the mercy of the Lord according to the covenant. We see in Luke chapter 1, down in verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the pro mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. All these covenant promises are given to us, and they get performed. That's the mercy of the Lord performing them in our life, to bring them to pass. God will do it. He watches over his word to perform it. He will absolutely bring it to pass in our life if we will do the things that he says. We see over in Genesis, mercy will lead you and guide you in the way that you go. When you meet the conditions, God will lead you. We see a scripture in Genesis 24, down here in verse 27. Here's where the master was going to get a wife for his, uh, for his master, uh, the, the, the servant was. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I have been in the way the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Otherwise, he didn't leave me uh, with no mercy or truth. He being in the way, which means he was walking in the way, the type of him walking in the way of the Lord, God led him to where he was supposed to go. When you're walking in the truth, remember, mercy is going to happen. You walk in the word, 
The mercy of God, that means as you walk in the Word, God's mercy will be shown to you in the fact that He will lead you and guide you to the things that He has for you. We see over in Exodus, chapter 15, over in verse 11, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who's, who's like thee, ho glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou, in thy mercy, hast led forth thy people, which thou hast redeemed. God will lead you. He's guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. God will always lead you in the way of holiness, of course. He's always going to lead you to the right place, to the right habitation. He's going to lead you forth if you are walking in the ways of the Lord. The mercy of God is available for us. God is such a merciful God. We see over in Genesis, chapter 19. Remember the angels came? They were coming to get, tell them that the judgment was going to come upon the city because of all the wickedness. And he comes, there is coming to Lot, Genesis 19, 15, when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city, because there's going to be a judgment coming. While he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, upon the hand of his wife, upon the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord, being merciful unto them, they brought him forth and set him without the city. God was merciful to bring them forth out of it. And they got saved and delivered out of that rather than destroyed. Mercy will bring God's deliverance in your life. We see in Titus chapter 3, verse 5. He'll get you out of harm's way, see. Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration, that's the new birth, and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is talking about your mind being renewed, totally transformed through the Word of God by the working of the Holy Spirit. So the mercy of God, He's going to bring forth His salvation, He's going to bring forth His freedom and liberty in your life and protection. He'll accomplish all these things for you. We've got to realize, actually, the way we got born again was God's mercy shown toward us and the love of God in action. It talks about in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy begot, begot us again, or we were born again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It was God's mercy reaching out to us in order to see us be born again. We must also understand that mercy is healing, because remember, mercy is the love of God in action shown forth. In Matthew chapter 20, down here in verse 30, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, what did they do? Cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. What were they looking for? They were looking for some action of healing calling out for mercy from him. The multitude rebuked him because they should hold their peace. They cried the more. They weren't going to stop, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will you that I shall do unto you? And they said, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. And Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. The mercy of God ministered healing to these. God wants us to have, show, to realize that mercy is available for us. Healing is mercy, and it's available. You can be healed. Philippians chapter 2, down here in verse 27. Here it's speaking about this one who was sick nigh unto death, but God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Otherwise he healed him, brought him out of being almost, the guy almost died. Mercy is healing and it's available for every single one of us. Also, deliverance is the mercy of God, getting the demons cast out. Matthew chapter 17, down in verse 14. Come to a multitude uh, that came to a certain man kneeling down, and he said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He's a lunatic and sore vexed, for oftentimes he falls into the fire and often into the water. They're looking for him to get delivered. Mercy is deliverance. They brought him the disciples. They could not cure him. He said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. He expected them all to be able to cast out. And they were, they were in unbelief. He rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. That's the mercy of God. Deliverance is mercy. Deliverance is, of course, important. Cast out all the demons to get rid of the root cause of the problems. 
In Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. You confess your sins, God is merciful, He will cleanse you from all the unrighteousness and He will remember your sins and your iniquities no more. That's the mercy of God. We've got to realize, praise God for the covenant that we have. We can receive mercy. So don't ever be wallowing in sins or don't be wallowing in guilt over the past. Get yourself right with the Lord and walk with Him now. <coughs> 2 Corinthians 4.1 seeing, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. They received the mercy of God. It says we faint not because they were going forth to minister it to others. They got the mercy, the mercy of God came to them for that ministry that they have. Otherwise, He wants you to function in ministry to others and don't faint. Don't carry out because you're responsible to go give that mercy out to others. God wants you to go and heal the sick, cast out the demons, minister to people, and do the things that He's called us to do. See, we've got to be serving the Lord. Don't be moved by what people do or what they think. You just go forth, preach the gospel, offer the truth, and minister the mercy of God. Proverbs 3.3, 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Don't let them forsake you. Don't let them leave you. No, it's all, again, tied in with the truth of God's Word as we're doing it. We see a scripture over in Psalms 21. Psalms 21, down here in verse 7. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Notice that. When the mercy of God is operating, that's God's love and action. That means uh, something's working to bring forth the power of God or the mercy of God, the healing of God, or whatever it is. It says, through the mercy of the Most High, you shall not be moved. You're not going to be moved. You're not going to slip. You're not going to fall. You're not going to draw back because you're seeing His mercy come forth. Now, if you turn and go back in the ways of sin, then you're not really trusting the Lord because, remember, we're a king. You and I are kings. We're to trust in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, we're not going to be moved. So we're not going to totter. We're not going to slip. We're not going to go backwards. No, we're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. In fact, this means to be shaken, moved, or overthrown. It even means This is, happens to be in the Nephal stem, and it means to shaken, be moved, and overthrown. So, the mercy of God will stop you from falling and getting beat up by the devil, being overthrown by him, because God's mercy are new every morning, and they're ready to manifest for us in our life. We see over in Psalms 25, results, the things what mercy will produce for us. All the paths of the Lord, Psalms 25, 10, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. That means your path will just be seeing the mercy of God working continually. That's what God wants. Blessings are going to keep coming on you. You see God working on your behalf. We even see it will even compass you about, as He says in Psalms 32, verse 10. Many sorrows will be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. But you're going to have to trust in the Lord. You can't be in doubt or unbelief. You've got to be doing, walking his ways and knowing that he's going to bring his promises to pass. It will compass you about. We see another scripture in ver chapter 33, verse 18. How the Lord's eye will be upon you. He's watching you. He's watching over you. We saw this before, Psalms 33, 18. The eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. God's eye will be upon you. It also, when the mercy of God's in operation in your life, you're going to grow. You're going to become strong in the Lord. Because it talks about in Psalms 52, 8. I'm like a green olive tree in the house of God. That's some, a green olive tree, one that's been producing fruit. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. It means you're walking the Lord. You're following his ways. You're growing up in the things of God, and you trust in the mercy of God. Spiritual growth is going to come forth in your life. We see in Psalms 89, verse 14, he says, Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. How many times have we seen mercy and truth tied together? It's all over the place. As you walk in the truth, so shall be the mercy of God in your life. That's, you must realize, that's the way we're going to walk. That's why you've got to put the Word first place in your life at all times. Psalms 94, 18. 
I said, when my foot, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. God's mercy will come and hold you up, build you up, hold you up in that situation. Remember, we don't have to totter, we don't have to fall, we don't have to uh, slip, as it says here. The mercy of God will hold you up. Also, when you're showing merciful to others, remember, whatever you give out is going to be given back to you. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Look what it says, Proverbs 11:17. The merciful man, he does good to his own soul. It's going to come back to you, isn't it? It's going to minister life to you. But the guy that's cruel, he troubles his own flesh. That's why you can't be cruel. You can't be mean. You can't be doing evil things, be anger, retaliating, you know, treating people wrongly. You're going to trouble yourself. You're going to bring curses on you. But the merciful man does good to his own soul. Proverbs 16, he says over in verse 6, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged. Here we have it again, don't we? It's continual. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. By mercy and truth, iniquity is going to be purged. It's going to be cleansed out from a New Testament standpoint. And the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil because God's mercy will come forth to cleanse us. In Proverbs 21, verse 21, he says, He that follows after righteousness and mercy, he's going to find life, Righteousness and honor. Righteousness and mercy. We need to follow the right way, but we also need to be showing mercy. Some people follow the right way, but they don't show mercy. Well, that's going to be a hindrance. You need to do both. Follow after righteousness and mercy. You're going to find God's life. You're going to find His righteousness. You're going to find honor. Honor from the Lord. Now, in the New Testament, we must understand, because of what Jesus has done for us, we now, in Christ, have a right to the mercy of God. It is part of our covenant promise. Look what it says in 1 Peter 2.10. In time past, we were not a people. We weren't born again. But are now the people of God. We've been born again. We had not obtained mercy because we weren't in a relationship with Him. But now we have obtained mercy. That, that's our standing in Christ as far as our legal right because it's part of our inheritance. All the past 10 scriptures are declaring what belongs to you in Christ that you have obtained mercy. Does that mean that all I do is just confess this scripture, I already have obtained mercy and it's going to come to pass? No. This is your legal right, what belongs to you. There's something that you're going to do to see your legal right of mercy come into manifestation. That's where your faith comes in, as it says in Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy. The one already said we already have obtained it. This says we come so we may obtain it. Sounds like a contradiction. It's not. The one that says we have obtained it is talking about our standing in Christ because of the fact that we're born again, we're in covenant relationship. It belongs to us legally. But this tells us what to do experientially to see what belongs to us in Christ manifest. We're going to come boldly to the throne of grace and we're going to obtain, which means lombano, take hold of mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's why you're going to learn to pray. When you pray, you've taken hold of the promises of God, you're taking hold of the mercy to be released, the promises of God to come to pass in your life. So prayer is going to see mercy be released and come into manifestation. We see over in 2 Timothy, chapter 1, and verse 18. The Lord granted him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, and in how many and how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus thou knowest very well. He's talking about how he ministered to him. And he says, because he's ministered to me, all these many things, the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy. You see, again, you show mercy to someone else in ministry, God's going to show mercy back to you. That's why he wants you out reaching out to people, doing something. Praying is a good thing. But he wants you to get out there and do some things, ministering to people's needs. We need to do these things. You're going to find mercy. And the me measure that you're ministering to others will be the measure that God will bring forth mercy in your own life. We see something back in Jonah that's interesting. Jonah had the ability to get mercy, even though he was in rebellion, if he would repent. Remember, God's mercies are available. And in Jonah's situation, remember he had rebelled he wouldn't go to preach the gospel at Nineveh like he was supposed to. And so he ended up going overboard, ends up in the fish's belly, 
of his rebellion. And he's about done. And he says, when my soul fainted within me, in Jonah 2, 7, I remembered the Lord. And that was good. The Lord could get me out of this. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. I began to pray and began to seek God. Always go to the Lord in every situation. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. What does this mean? This means if they're observing or giving heed to lying vanities, which is the state that he was in at that point in time. There, I'm in the fish's belly. Looks like it's all over for me. They forsake their own mercy. Otherwise, if I'm looking at my circumstances and think that God's mercy can't get me out of it, I'm going to let go. I'm going to forsake, which means to relinquish, let go, and leave off the availability of the mercy of God to come on the scene to minister to my need. Don't ever think that God can't bring forth His mercy in your life. You pay attention to those things, you'll let go of the mercy. You get your eyes on what the Lord says, now you're in the place where God can bring mercy to you. Look what He says. He's now, He says, what, the right thing. I'm going to sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I'm going to start thanking you for your mercy. That's the way you take hold of it. I will pay that I vowed. He had to repent. Okay, I, I repent. I'm, I confess this sin. I'm going to pay what I vowed. I'm going to go and I'm going to preach the gospel like I should. Salvation is of the Lord. Of course, He knew who, her, who His source was. God's the one who's going to save me and deliver me out of this situation. So he met the conditions. He repented, certainly obviously confessed his sin, had a heart change of heart. He started thanking God for delivering him and declaring that he was the one who would deliver him and save him out of the situation. What happened? The Lord spake to the fish and vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Don't look at your circumstances and think that mercy is not available. It's a lie even if you're in something because of walking contrary to God's ways. You confess your sins. You receive, you get in line with what He tells you to do. You trust in the Lord. You begin to thank Him for His mercy coming forth in your life. Be sure that you've repented and you're dealing with everything in your life because you can't go back and walk in sin and think you're going to get any mercy. And you're going to have to be st th start thanking Him for saving you, delivering you, doing whatever is necessary to bring you out of that bondage and then God will bring you out of it. See, so you've got to know the character of God. Is God delighting in judgment? No. He's delighting in mercy. Look what it says in Micah 7, 8, 18. Who's a God like unto you that pardons iniquity, passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. God delights in showing mercy to you. He delights in showing mercy to others. That's why you need to delight in showing mercy to others. If you won't delight in showing mercy to others, well, others why should you sh get any mercy from Him? See, you're going to be like God. You're going to act like God in ministering to others. And that is so important. Remember, it doesn't matter what they deserve. It only matters what they have need of. James, God's the one who is the judge, and He'll take care of the situation, that's for sure. But He delights in mercy. He didn't want people to be under the judgment. James 3.17 the wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. You call out for wisdom. God's wisdom is always going to be full of mercy. It's going to be showing you what to do. It's going to be bringing the mercy of God to you, leading you and guiding you, bringing forth His promises, showing you what to do in every situation. We also see that the end of the Lord's, it says, here in James chapter 5, down in verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You've heard of the patience of Job and seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. God's of tender mercy. You see, we've got to realize His mercy is available to us. And it's always available. I mean, the Bible talks about how His mercy are new every morning. Look over at Psalms 136. Psalms 136. If you are needing mercy, read the whole psalm. It'll get it through you eventually. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He's good, for His mercy endures forever. Thanks to the God of gods, His mercy endures forever. Keep saying it. Thanks to the Lord of lords, His mercy endures forever. To Lomu, who does great wonders, for His mercy endures forever. God's great wonders is His mercy. 
By wisdom he made the heavens, his mercy endures forever. He stretched out the earth above the waters, his mercy endures forever. He made the great, li great lights, everything that he does, because this is all things that he does, right? That's his mercy, showing forth. Sun to rule by day, his mercy. Moon and stars to rule by night, that's his mercy. Smote Egypt and their firstborn, that was his mercy to deliver them out of that. Brought out Israel from among them, that was his mercy, delivering them. Strong hand, stretched out arm for his mercy endures forever. Divided the Red Sea to deliver them, mercy endures forever. Israel to pass through the midst of it, that was all the mercy of God. Everything that God is doing is the mercy of God. Overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, his mercy endureth forever. His mercy is available for you. What, what do you need to overthrow? What enemies do you need to overthrow? What do you need to conquer? God's mercy is ready. What do you need for God to do? To him which has led his people through the wilderness, his mercy endures forever. I mean, he's, God's not leaving you. He's not going to forsake you. In his mercy will be there to walk you through what you need. Smote the great kings, his mercy endures forever. Slew the famous kings, doesn't matter how big they are. The giants all fall. Sion, king of the Amorites. Og, the king of Bashan, all these ones, gave their land for a heritage. The heritage here, for his mercy endures forever. He says this about every single one of these. He redeemed us from our enemies. His mercy endures forever. Give a food to all flesh. He wants people, he gives food to everybody. That's his mercy. You know, he doesn't want, doesn't want famine. Give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Every single verse talks about his mercy endures forever. God's mercy. You've got to look at every day. Think about taking hold of and receiving the mercy of God. Come boldly to the throne of grace and start taking hold of mercy by speaking the promises into being. Do it with thanksgiving and know that God is going to bring it to pass in your life. Praise God. Again, he gives thanks to the Lord. He's good. His mercy endures forever. Same thing through Psalms 118. He talks about, again, you go through this one and you see the very same thing being brought forth. Psalms 23, down in Psalms 23, it speaks about the Lord is my shepherd. And this is really a New Testament psalm as far as when it's fulfilled, because now he's the great shepherd of the sheep. If the Lord's your shepherd, which means you're a sheep, and that's in the New Testament era, we're going to follow him, walk in his ways. I shall not want. That means no lack, because God's going to meet your need. That's because of his mercy. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. That's prosperity. Prosperity. That's where they would be able to feed on whatever they had need of. He leads me beside the still waters. That's peace. God's going to bring peace in your life. He doesn't want everything to be all stirred up with all kinds of problems. He restores my soul. That's the mercy of God to bring restoration to you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to restore your soul. All hurts, wounds, damage. Get rid of all the evil stuff out of you. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He'll always lead you in righteousness. That's his mercy. You'll go the right direction. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death here in this world, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's the rod, which is type of Jesus. The, com the staff's a type of the Holy Spirit. Two comforters. We have the Word, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit comforting us. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's right, the enemies are all around. But it doesn't matter. The table of blessing will be available for you. He anointed my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. The anointing of God is upon us. Now the cup will run over with the blessings of God as God brings it forth. And why is this? Because surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So if you're looking for mercy, it's, it's right there. It's following you all the days of your life if you're walking in His ways. If you're being a real sheep, that's, of course, got to be the, the condition. You've got to be following the Lord and doing the things He says. If we will follow Him and do what He says, we can see the mercy of God coming to pass in every area of our life. So we see what mercy will do for us. It's going to lead us. It's going to guide us. It's going to bring salvation, cause us to be born again. It'll bring healing to you. You can take hold of healing. It brings deliverance from the demons. It'll Get rid of all your sins as far as God's mercy. He'll, he'll forgive you and not remember your sins any longer. The mercy of God working in your life is you functioning in ministry. He doesn't want you to faint or draw back from it. You're going to find favor, good understanding in the sight of the Lord when you walk in the mercy 
We didn't look at the rest of that one, did we? I only looked at part of it. I forgot the rest, the rest of that verse. This is the one in Proverbs 3. Verse 3, we saw where we're supposed to not let them forsake us. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. You get favor in the sight of God, you're going to get favor in the sight of man. Why? Because of mercy and truth. Again, you're walking in the Word, you're taking hold of mercy, you're not going to let it forsake you. You're going to see that come into manifestation in your life. You're going to not be moved. You're not going to be shaken. You're not going to be overthrown. You're going to be blessed in your steps, all the paths. Mercy is going to compass you about. The eye of the Lord is going to be upon you. When God is looking at you and watching you, He's going to bring blessings on you. You're going to have spiritual growth like the green olive tree. Your God's going to go before you. His face is going to go before you. The mercy is going to hold you up. You're going to do good to your own soul. Iniquity is going to be purged out. You're going to find life and righteousness and honor. You're going to be able to take hold of mercy because you already have obtained mercy in Christ. That's your legal standing. And as you go forth to minister to others, you're going to find the mercy of the Lord. Whatever you give out, it's going to be given back to you again. And regardless of what your situation is, I mean, it looked like Jonah was all over, but God could bring him out of that. If God can get Jonah out of that fish, fish's belly, it looked like it's all over, he certainly can bring you out of whatever you are, got yourself into. God is a merciful God. He delights in mercy. And we see that he's very merciful. His mercy endures forever. And mercy will follow you. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. If you're a sheep following the Lord. But you're going to have to take hold of it in the New Testament and do what he says. You take hold of these promises to speak them into being to see the promises of God come to pass. Remember, he remembers his covenant and he will perform his mercy in your life. Say this, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your mercy which is available to me because I'm in Christ in the New Testament. I see you are merciful throughout the Old Testament and you are merciful in the New Testament. Your mercies are new every morning. Your mercies are available for me. They always endure. I thank you that I'm going to receive your mercy. Goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life. Because I'm going to walk in line with your word. And I'm going to come boldly to the throne of grace. And I'm going to take hold of your mercy and find grace to help in my time of need. I thank you for the mercy of God that brings every promise into manifestation. Belongs to me. I'm going to sow to myself in righteousness, speaking the word of God, and I'm going to reap in the mercy of God. I thank you that you delight in mercy, not in judgment. I thank you for your mercy, which has accomplished all the things you've done for me in my life. Now, I will be merciful to others. I will not let the devil have place to stop the mercy of God. As I'm merciful, I will receive mercy. I am going to do what you say, and I'm going to see the promises come to pass. And I will see the mercy of God, the love of God in action, coming forth in my life and also through me to others. I will walk in mercy and I will receive the mercy of God. Thank you. There'll be much fruit because I will be merciful and I will receive all mercy. Every promise, nothing is going to be stopped because the Lord is always ready, plenteous in mercy, Great mercy. I trust in your mercy. I will take hold of it, and I will see it come to pass in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God's mercy. It's tremendous what he's done. The New Testament says grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. That's what he has for us. He wants it for every one of us. But we do have to beat the conditions. Many people don't get the mercy because they haven't met the conditions. We've got to meet the conditions, and then you can take hold of the mercy of God. That's why you've got to get your eyes off of people. You've got to get your eyes off of situations. Get your eyes on the Lord and do what He says. Now you're in a position for God to work. Don't let the devil get you off on the negative things, this and that, and person, that person, this situation, whatever it is. Get your eyes on the Lord. Do what He says. God's mercy is coming to you.
Father, we thank you and praise you. There'll be much fruit because we are hearers and doers of this word. Thank you for the mercy of God and the goodness and mercy. It's following us all the days of our life. We're going to see it manifest in our life every day. Thank you for all that you accomplish as we hear and do this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, if you need mercy, mercy of healing, it's available. We just pray the prayer of faith, take hold of the mercy, God's healing comes in. Deliverance, same thing. Cast out the demons, that's God's mercy coming to us. So if you have need prayer, whatever area, I invite you to come forward. We'll pray for you, and what will happen? God's mercy will be manifested because His mercies are always available for us. Praise God. Be a doer of the word. If you need prayer, come forward. Have a wonderful week. As you are being merciful, don't let the devil get you in any judgmental negative attitudes whatsoever. God bless. You're dismissed. Need prayer? Come forward.